Hello, I am cousin Kiev from Vorobyaninov. All the Michaels are dead. Всем привет! Добро пожаловать на мой канал! Hey bookworms, welcome back to my channel and to another book review. And today I will be talking about The Twelve Chairs by Ilya Ilyev and Evgeny Petrov. And in case that wasn't clear by now, it's a Russian novel. Although I've never seen this book in any classic Russian literature list, I do think it's a bit of a niche classic. At least it's famous in certain circles. Or maybe it's just because half of my family is Ukrainian that I know about it, and also because Mel Brooks, whom I absolutely adore, had a movie version of the book in the 1970s. Also, that strange sentence in the intro was a quote from the movie. The Twelve Chairs is a satirical novel that was written and takes place in 1927 in Soviet Russia, where Mrs. Petuchova dies at the ripe old age of 50, and on her deathbed she reveals to her son-in-law, Ippolit Vorobyaninov, that years ago she hid all the family jewels in one of the twelve chairs of a dining room set she owned, a set that was later collected by the communist government. Vorobyaninov decides to find a treasure chair because why not, it's a lot of rubles if he does, and he partners up with Ostap Bender, a charming conman who is both street smart and extremely confident, a must if you're a conman, I suppose. So cowardly Vorobyaninov and resourceful Bender start their journey to track and retrieve the chairs, who are sold and spread throughout the USSR, racing against a greedy priest, Father Fyodor, who heard the old lady's last confession and decided also that finding these jewels could be quite useful. Our heroes find themselves in all sorts of situations and places, pretending to be everything from great communist leaders to chess masters, all in the search of those 12 chairs. I will be honest with you guys, I really wanted to love this book, but the truth is that I enjoyed it a lot less than I thought I would. The problem lies mostly in the fact that this is a satire about a specific time and place, and in order to really understand the book, the plot, the way the characters talk and what they do, you need to understand how Russia in the early 20th century looked like. And the world of the book, this 1920s Russia, is so different from the world I know and grew up in that this book might as well have taken place in a parallel universe. But it wasn't all bad, so let me start up with the things I did like about the book. First off, I might have not understood all of the jokes and references, but I did understand some, and some parts of the book were hilarious. There's so much wit in this book, and some of the shenanigans Vorobyaninov and Bender fight themselves in, mostly due to Bender's crazy plans, are hysterical. I actually laughed out loud at some points. When the book was good, it was really good. Also, despite being so reliant on the reality of the USSR in the 1920s, certain things never change. I'm mostly talking about bureaucracy, so even living in a parallel universe, I could still understand some of the jokes. So in this sense, the book is kind of timeless. And regardless of understanding, this novel gives us a glimpse into the lives of the Soviet people in those times, and I found that rather interesting. And secondly, Ostap Bender, this character made the book, and he was definitely my favorite character. I also liked Vorobyaninov, so I could say that, generally speaking, the crazy cast of characters was also fantastic. But Bender, with his cocky charm, was such a lovable douchebag. And I usually hate douchebags, but he just... he fits there. He would come up with the craziest plans and so confidently execute them, pretending to be whoever he believes will best suit the situation. And I'm not the only one who liked him so much. In fact, he was so popular that the authors decide to dedicate an entire sequel to him called The Golden Calf. I haven't read that one yet, but I'm looking for a translation. But on the whole, I really felt like I was missing a huge chunk of previous knowledge in order to really get the book. This is a problem with comedy, which can be very culture-specific, and satire is even more problematic. It's probably a genre that feels dated the quickest. Also, maybe it's related, but some bits of the book were just not as interesting and entertaining as others. 
At some points you have silly slapstick humor, but it does work. I think slapstick is rather timeless. Just the other day I had a conversation about how funny Peter Sellers Clouseau still is. But some parts in the 12 chairs, some conversations specifically, were rather boring. This book really is all highs and lows and goes from brilliant hilarity to why was this part even here really quickly? So basically, this book is wonderful and I do recommend it, but be aware that it talks about a very specific culture. I have some basic knowledge about Soviet Russia, both because of my family and because some of this is just general common knowledge. It's not like the 12 chairs aged badly, it's just that you really need some background knowledge in order to understand it. So I really want to know your opinion if you've read this book. Do you agree with me on that point? I'm really curious if other people who aren't from the former USSR would understand the book so partially as me. Also comment on my Russian pronunciation, I did try my best. And that wraps up my review on the 12 chairs. Guys, Spasiva, thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to like it, share it to the world and subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss any of my other bookish videos. Also, leave me a comment saying what you think about the 12 chairs and which book character made a book for you. A while ago, I asked what was your least favorite book character. This time, let's talk favorites. Anyway, bookworms, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye!